Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we can present our review of Sapphire's RX 6800 XT Nitro Plus. Just like the Power Color Red Devil that we reviewed earlier this week, the Nitro Plus comes with a triple fan cooler, it comes factory overclocked with an increased power target, and it also comes with onboard dual BIOS functionality. Before we get any further though, I do want to address one thing that we have seen a few times now, and that is just about reviewing products which no one can buy. And I appreciate this, is it's a hugely frustrating situation to be in. I myself, while I'm not in the market to buy a GPU, am looking to buy a Ryzen CPU, and I simply can't, so I really do understand the frustration. What we're trying to do though with these reviews, contrary to some views that I've seen, is we're not trying to show off the GPUs that we have. We're really just trying to provide buying advice to you guys so when these GPUs finally do come back into stock, you know which ones are the best, which ones run cooler, and if there's any particular cards to avoid, for instance. So I just wanted to make that clear. We're really not trying to show off. We are trying to provide useful data to you guys so you can make an informed buying decision once these GPUs do finally come back into stock. With that said, we'll kick straight on with the Nitro Plus review and we'll start off with the overall aesthetic. Here, Sapphire hasn't really changed a whole lot compared to the Nitro Plus 5700 XT. We can still see a black and silver shroud. This is made entirely from plastic, so it doesn't have as premium a feel as the reference 6800 XT, for instance, which had a all aluminium die cast shroud, but I guess once it's installed in your case, it doesn't really matter. As for the fans now, here we can see a few tweaks to the overall design. First of all, we obviously have three fans and the outer two measure 100 millimeters in diameter, while the central fan measures 90 millimeters. All three actually feature this new design where there's a ring going around the outer edge of the fan, and Sapphire actually calls this its hybrid fan design. So it's supposed to give you the added benefits of a blower style fan in that you get the increased pressure while also combining that with the traditional low noise of an axial fan. And of course, we will test noise levels and overall performance later in the review. The final thing to note on the fans is that the central one does spin in reverse relative to the outer two, which is something we are now accustomed to as we have seen it on various cards from Asus and Gigabyte. In terms of the overall size of the card now, the Nitro Plus measures in at 310mm by 134.3 by 55.3. So it is fractionally smaller than the Red Devil, but we're talking very fine margins. Sapphire is keen to emphasize the overall weight of the Nitro Plus though, and on our scale it came in at 1,239 grams. The Red Devil, for instance, is almost 400 grams heavier than the Nitro Plus, while the reference card is about 260 grams heavier on our scales. Moving on though, in terms of the back plate, this is a full length aluminium plate and it comes in a pretty striking silver color. I have to say I do really like this. It gives quite a, a vivid look to the overall card. We can also see a cutout behind the GPU die and one towards the end of the card to allow air to come straight through the heatsink. And then that Sapphire Nitro logo is actually one of the RGB zones on this card. There's also an RGB LED strip on the front side and another Sapphire logo which lights up with RGB LEDs. Sapphire also includes an ARGB header on the end of the PCB so you can synchronize the GPU with your motherboard should you wish. On the front edge of the card now we can also note the dual bio switch. By default, the card uses its performance BIOS, which is the toggle closest to the IO bracket, but you can also switch it over to the silent BIOS, which will drop fan speed, it will drop clocks, and also the power target. There is actually a third toggle on this BIOS switch, but it's not a third BIOS. It simply lets you choose between the performance and the silent BIOS using the Sapphire Trick software. Elsewhere, we can also note two 8-pin power connectors, while well, video outputs consist of one HDMI 2.1 and three DisplayPort 1.4. We'll now move on to talk about card disassembly. And the first thing you're really gonna note here once we remove the heatsink is that there's actually a secondary heatsink which is used to cool the memory and also the VRM. This uses two flattened heat pipes and three very small fin stacks to provide dedicated cooling for those areas. The main heatsink itself also sports three definitely larger fin stacks and these are connected by a total of six 
six millimeter heat pipes. The GPU die, meanwhile, contacts with a copper base plate. Lastly, as for the PCB, this does look pretty close to the reference design with a 13 phase VRM for the GPU and a three phase VRM for the memory. Sapphire is using International Rectifier TDA21472 MOSFETs rated at 70 amps, while the GPU VRM controller is the Infineon XDPE132G5D. The memory controller is an International Rectifier IR35217, and we can also note that those memory modules are provided by Samsung. So that is it for our look at the card, the cooler and the PCB and we'll now move on to talk about performance. To do this, all of our testing was conducted using our regular GPU test system which has been provided to us by PC Specialist. This consists of an overclocked i9-10900K running at 5.1GHz across all cores and that is paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard. We also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600 megahertz. Starting with our out of the box thermal performance then, here we can see the Nitro Plus is pretty close to the power color Red Devil in terms of the raw thermals. In fact, the silent BIOS on both the Nitro Plus and the Red Devil recorded the exact same temperatures, hitting 77 degrees on the edge and 94 degrees for the junction temperature. The Nitro Plus performance BIOS meanwhile hits 75 degrees on the edge and 95 degrees for the junction temperature and that is an increase of 2 degrees compared to the Red Devil's OC BIOS. As we will see later though, power does play a part in this and even then the differences aren't large. As for default fan behaviour, the performance BIOS saw the fan spin up to 44% or around 1500 RPM and that produced 37 dBA on our sound meter. This is fractionally quieter than the Red Devil's OC BIOS, but I'm not sure you'd actually be able to notice the difference. As for the silent BIOS now, this dropped fan speed to 35% or just 1200 RPM, producing whisper quiet noise levels. In actual fact, just as we found with the Red Devil, when the fans spin this slowly, a slight amount of coil wine is actually producing more noise than the fans themselves, although I didn't notice this once the rest of the system fans were spinning at their normal speeds. So that is stock behavior and now let's look at thermals when noise normalized to 40 decibels. For the Nitro Plus, this meant setting a fan speed of 55% or around 1890 RPM. With this done, we can see the Nitro Plus doing fractionally better than the Red Devil. We are talking very small differences, as the Nitro Plus performance BIOS is just one degree cooler than the Red Devil's OC BIOS when looking at the junction temperature. We can also see the Nitro Silent BIOS is two degrees cooler than the Red Devil's Silent BIOS. At the end of the day, both cars deliver great results, but the Nitro Plus is technically superior. Part of that also comes down to power draw, as the Nitro Plus is able to run that tiny bit cooler while actually drawing more power than the Red Devil. The performance BIOS, for instance, averaged 341 watts, while the silent BIOS averaged 311 watts, both of which are higher than the Red Devil's equivalent modes. Sapphire uses this extra power to push clocks that little bit higher, and across our 30 minute stress test, the Nitro Plus ran about 50 MHz faster than the Red Devil when using the performance BIOS. Even the Nitro's silent BIOS was actually only 20 MHz slower than the Red Devil's OC BIOS. Moving on to our game benchmarks then, here we start with control. In this title, the Nitro Plus averaged 45 FPS, which is an identical result to the power color Red Devil, but is still a 5% increase over the reference 6800 XT. F1 2020 does show a very small increase for the Nitro Plus, as it delivers an extra 2% performance over the Red Devil, and an extra 6% compared to the reference design. Gears 5 also sees a tiny increase for the Nitro Plus over the Red Devil, but we're talking a single frame here. This works out as a 5% boost over the reference card. And then to close out, both Red Dead Redemption 2 and Watch Dogs Legion saw no difference between the Sapphire Nitro Plus and the Power Color Red Devil in terms of the average frame rates. Of course, we do also try manual overclocking to see how far we can push this GPU. And with the Nitro Plus, we actually saw the best results we have yet to see from either the Red Devil 
or the reference 6800 XT. I was able to push the frequency slider up to 2700 megahertz whilst also able to max out the memory slider at 2150 megahertz. In the real world this resulted in the GPU running at between 2600 and 2650 megahertz. This is a pretty decent overclock and it resulted in gains of between 7 to 9 percent in the titles that we retested. But compared to a stock clock reference 6800 XT, the gains actually came in between 11 to 15 percent, and that is a pretty sizable increase over the 6800 XT's baseline performance. Power draw, meanwhile, increased to 385 watts when manually overclocked, and that is a 13 percent increase over the stock performance BIOS. All in all then, the Sapphire RX 6800 XT Nitro Plus is another highly impressive graphics card. It is definitely better than the reference 6800 XT across the board, and you would have to say that it is just about technically superior when compared to the Power Color Red Devil, and that is because it is marginally faster while it also runs fractionally cooler when noise normalized. However, that comparison is really coming down to the finest of margins and at the end of the day, both the Nitro Plus and the Red Devil are very solid options. So as good as it is, the main part of this conclusion really is just going to come down to pricing and of course availability or rather lack thereof. Sapphire did tell us that the MSRP for the Nitro Plus is £694 here in the UK. But at the moment, on Overclockers UK, the price is actually set at £749.99. So that's actually £149 more than AMD's baseline MSRP. The obvious issue with that is that it puts the 6800 XD squarely in RTX 3080 territory. And that GPU is faster at 4K, it has DLSS, and it obviously has superior ray tracing performance. Then again, you can't actually buy any RTX 3080s at the moment, and those that are listed are again seeing prices well above MSRP, so it really does make giving a final verdict pretty tough. The one thing I would say is that for me, 6800 XTs really do need to be cheaper than RTX 3080. Going back over my launch day review of the 6800 XT, you can see that really my main argument, the main reason to buy one of those GPUs is that they offer better cost per frame or better overall value at that baseline MSRP. So if we start seeing 6800 XTs priced the same or more expensive than RTX 3080, it quickly becomes hard to justify. The issue there though is that we don't actually know if or when RTX 3080s are actually going to be back at the MSRP as like we said currently they're all listed well above those prices. It really is a hugely frustrating time for anyone looking to upgrade their GPU and I really do empathise as like I said I'm on the lookout myself for a Ryzen CPU and the fact I can't buy one is pretty annoying. All I can say is I really do hope that supply is going to start coming in soon. I don't know if it will, but for all of our sakes, I'm hoping that's going to come sooner rather than later, and we are going to finally see these prices start to normalize. That is going to do it for this review though, guys. So if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Have you tried to buy a new GPU recently, or have you simply not bothered as there's been no stock? While you're there, do hit that subscribe button, poke that notification bell, and you can also find a link to our Discord server down in the description. It would also be awesome if you guys would consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. That is it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.